Hey guys, I hope you are having a fabulous day. This is video number two in my series, So You Wanna Move to Mexico. This is my way of trying to distill a lot of what I learned about living in Mexico and give it to those of you who are thinking about a move to Mexico or planning a move to Mexico. If you're new to the channel, my name is Erin and I lived in Mexico for a year from the summer of 2018 to the summer of 2019. Most of that time we spent in Guanajuato City, Guanajuato. And if you are interested in that city, check out my ebook, which is a collection of our memories and our favorite places and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of pictures of that beautiful, beautiful place. If you wanna follow me on social media, I've got a Facebook page and an Instagram. I am most active on Instagram. And if you want a little more access, you can go to Patreon. If you sign up as a patron, you get early access to all the videos, lots of behind the scenes stuff, vlog content that I make only for patrons. And if you have any questions about moving to Mexico, living in Mexico, any of that stuff, I can answer your questions in depth over there so check that out all the all that information will be in the description box below this video today i want to talk about the top 10 things i think you need to bring with you if you are moving to mexico so for a lot of the things that i'm going to list i will include links down below in the description box for the products that i use these are gonna be Amazon affiliate links, so if you do click and purchase, I will get a small commission for that, but it does not cost you any more. And I'm including these links not, for, not to say you have to get these brands, but just to give you an idea of what, what we have, what we brought with us. The number one thing I think you need to bring with you to Mexico is a carbon monoxide an explosive gas detector. Also, while you're at it, throw in a smoke alarm. Here's the thing. Most rentals are not going to have these things. Definitely not a carbon monoxide alarm, and we never stayed in a rental that had a smoke alarm either. There have been some tragic cases of people dying in Mexico because there was a leak in their rental and they didn't know it. There was a couple who passed away in San Miguel de Allende due to carbon monoxide poisoning. There was an entire family uh, over in the Yucatan, I think it was in Tulum, um, who passed away right before we moved to Mexico um, because of gas poisoning. So this is really serious. I want you absolutely, if you are traveling to Mexico, and actually I bring ours everywhere we go now, not just Mexico. I think it is absolutely a must. Get yourself a portable carbon monoxide detector. When I was looking for one, I wanted one that could detect um, carbon monoxide and also propane. So I, the one that I got is a carbon monoxide and explosive gas detector. Yeah, so this is, I think, the most important thing on this whole list. Please, please get yourself a portable carbon monoxide detector and bring that with you. Smoke alarm, also something that struck me when we were living in Guanajuato City, we didn't have a smoke alarm for the first several months. And I realized there's really only one way out of this place and all the windows are barred. We had one front door. It had three locks and an outside door. And all of those locks needed keys. Oh yeah, there was a fourth like bar across the thing. Um, and all of the windows had metal bars on them. And I realized like, how would we get out of this place if there were a fire and it blocked our way? getting out. Yeah, it was a really scary thought, especially since we have a young child. Uh, so I would really recommend bringing a smoke alarm with you just in case the place you're staying at does not have one. You can get these things in Mexico, but I think you should have them right away. 
So you don't wanna have a lag time of like trying to find them, not knowing where they are, not knowing where the store is. Like when you first get there, you're gonna have plenty of things to do, like just getting basic groceries and getting yourself settled in and all of that stuff. I would not put off something that was as important as this. So I would bring them with you when you move to Mexico. Okay, the second thing on the list is a VPN, a virtual private network. Is that what it is? Virtual private network. A lot of people think about getting a VPN if they are going to China because of the restrictions that <clears throat> the um, Chinese government puts on internet access. However, a lot of people don't think about that for Mexico. You will not have any problem getting online in Mexico. However, you will not have access to everything exactly the same as you do in the United States. For example, your bank may not allow you to do um, online deposits or certain transactions when you are in another country. So if you have a VPN, it makes it makes it look like you are accessing the internet from anywhere you choose. So you can choose the United States and the website will think, oh, you are visiting this website from the United States. So we use it for banking and also for Netflix because not all shows or movies are released for every single country exactly the same. So you may have a show that you absolutely are addicted to on Netflix and you might not be able to watch it in Mexico. But if you've got a VPN, no problem. Number three, medicines. Here's the thing about medicines. If you have something that you take regularly, you need to find out if it's going to be available in Mexico because not all medicines that you are getting in the United States, you are going to be available in all areas of Mexico. For example, I have a friend who used a certain migraine medicine that was not available in Guanajuato City. Jesse was on Wellbutrin. We could not find Wellbutrin in San Miguel or Guanajuato. And we were told by a pharmacist in Guanajuato that it was not available in Mexico, period. Some other people online mentioned possibly finding it in places like Puerto Vallarta, but I'm not sure. So do check if you have prescriptions about whether you will be able to get them in Mexico or if you can get an extended amount when you're back in the States and then make regular trips. Um, don't leave that up to chance if it's a really important medication. Okay, number four would be a good kitchen knife. If you love to cook, if cooking is important to you, the one thing that I would say definitely do bring is a really good kitchen knife. You're probably not gonna have good or even decent knives in a rental. Um, and they're just in general rental Airbnbs and, and even long-term rentals, the kitchen gear that you're going to have is probably not very good. A lot of it you can replace, but it was really hard for me to find really good kitchen knives. So when we went back in December to visit our families for Christmas, I brought my kitchen knives with me and I was so thankful that I did. The first time we went to Mexico, I thought I'd be real clever and bring a knife sharpener. And what I realized is you can't sharpen your way out of a really bad knife. So yeah. <laughs> Number five, I would bring some reusable produce bags. If you are going to be transporting groceries without a car, if you're gonna be carrying them around, or if you're going to the markets, I found some really sturdy, reusable produce bags to be invaluable. Um, a lot of people think to bring the reusable grocery bags, which are also great and you should bring, but the produce bags specifically, the ones that I got, it has a little drawstring, you can keep them closed, your grapes don't spill everywhere, you can keep things a little bit uh, more together, especially if you're walking a lot. Um, it's just one of those things you don't think about because if you're used to the US, like you get in your car, you drive to the store, you get your stuff, you put it in the trunk, you drive home, you bring the stuff from 
your car to your kitchen, right? If you are taking a bus or a taxi or you've got to walk up three flights of stairs to your apartment, like plastic rips and it can be really bad. <laughs> Just speaking from experience, yeah. Okay, number six, and this is gonna be a weird one. I'm gonna say if you are really sensitive to air pollution, bring a good face mask. Now, face masks are not worn um, with the same amount of uh, frequency or popularity as they are in Asia, especially like Japan or China. So you are probably gonna feel like a weirdo for wearing them. Um, Guanajuato City has got a decent amount of Japanese expats and students, so it kind of was starting to catch on there. You might not feel so crazy there, but other places it's not really a thing. But I've met people who were so sensitive to the poor air that they were getting migraines or you know not feeling well, and in those kind of cases, like. Um, yeah, a face mask might be something that you might want to have. Some cities in Mexico do have some pretty rough air quality, just something to know going into it. Number seven, uh, spices. If you like to cook a certain cuisine and you rely on certain spices, you may want to bring those with you because depending on where you go, you may not be able to find them. So I like to cook a lot of Indian food, a lot of Asian food, and so there were a lot of spices that I just couldn't find in Guanajuato when we were there. Now, if you're moving to a place like Mexico City, Guadalajara, this is probably completely unnecessary because I doubt there's anything you couldn't find in those cities. But if you're moving to a smaller town, Go ahead and bring some of the spices that you rely on most. You can go ahead and bring unopened bags of those with you. Number eight is a UPS and a Wi-Fi router. Okay, a UPS is uninterrupted power supply. These things are big and heavy, so if you're flying, you're probably not gonna wanna bring one with you. But if you work online, you're going to want to get one when you get here. Jesse bought a couple of them, I think at the Radio Shack in the mall at Guanajuato, in Guanajuato. They're not cheap, and like I said, they're, they're heavy, but they were invaluable. Power outages are quite common. They were quite common in Guanajuato. I don't get the impression that that is really abnormal for Mexico. It's basically a battery backup um, and you can plug your devices into that. We plugged our Wi-Fi router into the uninterrupted, uh, into the UPS so whenever we lost power, we wouldn't lose internet as well. And I was very grateful for that. <laughs> if you have sensitive electronics, you are also going to want to use them on a UPS because electricity can fluctuate quite a lot, so if you've got really sensitive electronics, use a UPS for those. A wireless router, the places that you stay are probably gonna have that, but what we noticed in a lot of the rentals, especially the Airbnbs, is that sometimes they would have really old ones and it would make the internet a lot slower than it needed to be, so. I know we wish that we had brought our own with us. If you've got one that's good, go ahead and bring it with you. Number nine, WhatsApp. Get this for your phone. Everybody, it seems, in Mexico uses WhatsApp for texting. Um, I had WhatsApp uh, numbers for my doctors, for my vet, you know, it's just, WhatsApp is the thing. Go ahead and go to the app store, download WhatsApp, get it set up now, get all your stuff going, and then that way, when you're down, if you meet a Mexican friend, then you can add them on WhatsApp and you'll be good to go. And number 10 is not a thing, but a quality. If you want to move to Mexico, you need to bring your flexibility. You need to bring a sense of adventure. 
It is not something that you can plan to a T. Things are gonna happen that you are not going to expect. It is a beautiful, crazy, wild adventure and you will be so much better off if you just let it happen as it's going to happen. It is hard for those of us who are planners, I am one of them, <laughs> but there is only so much you can plan for. Just know at the end of the day, you can plan all you want and there's still gonna be something that you didn't anticipate. Sometimes it's gonna drive you crazy and sometimes it's gonna be beautiful and amazing. And that is moving to Mexico. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you are moving to Mexico, leave me a comment below, give this video a like, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't as well. And if you want more detailed information about moving to Mexico, join me over on Patreon. I can give you a lot more in-depth answers over there. I hope you have a great day, guys.